How's it going, everybody? Derek Pascarella here, otherwise known as A Team, and we are going to be looking at a new work in progress feature for the VM2. And if you don't know about the VM2, I've got a couple videos on the channel uh, explaining, you know, overview how it works, how things like automatic game detection and automatic virtual. VMU creation and switching works with things like Open Menu, which can be used with a GDMU optical drive emulator. But today, we're going to be looking at a very cool work in progress feature for, let's say, a 90% or so accurate automatic game detection, even when using real discs. And of course, that also means this would work with other ODEs um, other than GDMU when paired with open menu. So that would mean it would work just the same if you were using a mode from Terra Onion, or if you were using Nemo's USB GD-ROM, or if you were using GDMU with the legacy GD menu software instead of open menu. So let's give this a try. First, we'll give Sonic Adventure a go. Got our disc. Good old discs. Sometimes you actually miss the experience. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is actually launch the game, and then what we'll see on the VMU LCD is uh, an automatic detection of the game with just, you know, nothing but the disc in, um, and then the creation of a virtual VMU. And there you go. It just went ahead and created that virtual VMU. And uh, just as if you were using GDMU and OpenMenu, that virtual VMU now lives on the micro SD card and it would be automatically switched to anytime you boot up this game. I'll just let the game start here so I know that it definitely creates the save file, and then we'll move on to testing a couple more. All right, good enough. As we can see, back to our default icon there. We'll put Sonic Adventure away. Now, you are actually getting to test these live with me for the very first time. I didn't pre-select these games for any reason. So let's let's try Soul Calibur. The soul still burns. <laughs> Firstly, let's actually see what VMU is selected here. Uh, so this is the base VMU on my um, VM2, which is why it has this icon. Uh, so when we went back to the BIOS, it actually kicked back to the original base VMU. Um, that's why you see my open menu settings file on there. Totally unrelated to what we're doing here. Obviously, we're using real disks. All right. Let's load up Soul Calibur. And there we have it. Soul Calibur just auto created the save file. Or rather, it auto created the virtual VMU on which the save file would live, of course. So we'll just go into 
the game here. Maybe go into our options menu and save some settings. Save data. Okay, very good. We'll put Soul Calibur away. And the last test, one of my favorites of all time and potentially my favorite game on the Sega Dreamcast, Shenmue. Of course, for things like multi-disc games, um, the same dedicated virtual VMU that's automatically created and automatically uh, loaded will be, you know, uh, consistent across all discs as part of a multi-disc game. So it's not like you'll be uh, creating separate virtual VMUs for, you know, each disc. Anyway, let's boot up disc one of Shenmue. There you have it, automatically created. You can start a new game, continue. Obviously there isn't anything to continue, but yeah. Let me go ahead and create a new game in hopes that it will actually write something to the VMU. Oh, it does, okay, creating file, good. The reason I wanna do that is because we're gonna switch over to the computer in just a moment and actually check out uh, the save files created on the micro SD. Complete. All right. Well, we're not going to uh, watch the opening of Shenmue 2 here as great as it is. Or excuse me, of Shenmue here as great as it is. Let's switch over to the computer. Okay, so we are over on the computer. We just watched as I booted up three original discs and virtual VMUs were created for all three on the VM2 with this new work in progress feature. Um, I've got File Explorer open here with the micro SD inserted and mounted on the computer. You can ignore the Nintendo DS uh, drive label. I actually borrowed a micro SD from uh, a DS flash cart <laughs> just to do this test. Um, and we can see that folders were created for the game IDs from the three titles that we just tested. So for example, if we open up the first one, um, there's no metadata like text files and such written to this folder yet. Um, a complete database is going to be put in place, but for now, right, like I said, this is just a work in progress. But let's go ahead and open the first one and, well, as expected, there's one of our games, Sonic Adventure. So at this point, we could, you know, do things like uh, export this particular save file, um, import a new one, let's say something with all characters uh, completed with their stories, things like that, right? Typical save file operations. Uh, if we go back, well, there's Shenmue, just as expected. And lastly, the soul still burns. <laughs> Here's Soul Calibur. Um, so yeah, as we can see, all three of the virtual VMUs were created uh, and the appropriate save file resides on each one. Um, this new one VMU, you can ignore that. That was just one uh, I manually created on the, on the uh, micro SD earlier before the video started. But let's actually switch back to the console because I want to show that if we were to, for example, boot up Shenmue, and it detects the pre-existing virtual VMU, it won't have us creating a new game save file. It'll already have done that. And of course, since I didn't make any progress in the game, it'll, it'll have us start from the opening sequence, but at least the auto detection and VMU loading uh, will be working. So back to the Dreamcast we go. All right, and here we are. Let's boot up 
disc one of Shenmue. And once the VM2 detects that Shenmue, in fact, is the game loaded up, it'll queue up the virtual VMU. which we just saw. All right, so if we do new game, we should not see the message telling us it's gonna create a new save file. And we did not, it's already there because of course, the virtual VMU was automatically queued up when it detected the game. And our beautiful opening sequence, one of the greatest in video game history is playing, accompanied by of course, the jet whirling sounds the Dreamcast GD-ROM drive. <laughs> anyway, guys, that is the video for today. As I said, this is a work-in-progress feature. It is not uh, ready for public consumption. And, um, you know, Chris is going to be continuing, uh, you know, just developing this to try to polish it as much as possible before public release. Um, I expect it's a feature that will require some feedback from users as certain compatibility or detection problems arise but as i said at the beginning of the video this is not going to be a 100 percent uh let's say accurate and thorough method for game detection right the only way to really do that is have your ode software actually transmit game id uh, to the vm2 which is what it does with open menu um, but this is a great great quality of life feature that'll do a lot for a lot of users so very happy and proud to be showing it off in today's video. That's it for now, and stay tuned for more.